Good morning and welcome to Christ the Servant King. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, my name is Chris and I am the vicar here. And uh, it's, a real, it's a real joy sometimes to, to look out and see who's turning up, who's here to worship God. Our theme for this morning is sharing. And um, there's two little guinea pigs up here. Sharing a stalk of grass. And um, we're going to be using... We're going to be using this little feature uh, called Slido for a quiz later on. You might want to, if you've got a mobile phone, you can join with this. We, we can, you can call out stuff later on. But uh, if you've got a mobile phone or an iPad or a, if you've brought your desktop computer with you, you can go onto Slido.com. I don't know. These young, you never know what these youngsters are going to do these days. You can join up, you can go to Slido.com and you can join this, this quiz at this little number here, 1054530, and you can join the CSK sharing quiz. And the question that's being asked at the moment, and for some reason I cannot make this writing bigger on this screen, what do you most like sharing? And so far we've had three, we've had three um, replies, fun stories, jokes, and good news. Uh, what do you most like sharing? Um, we're going to have a bit more about that later on, but we're going to start off now with a time of worship. So I'm going I'm to pray, I'm going to invite God to work in us while we meet, and then the band are going to lead us in song. Father God, thank you that you share with us, Lord, that you don't close your gates and lock yourself away but you throw the gates wide and you welcome us in and you have a feast ready for us Lord this morning may we accept what it is you have to offer to us Lord come and fill our hearts now as we worship you in Jesus name Amen let's stand together and pray as we're able and praise God Let what's dead come to life. We are here. 
welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God above, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. Let every heart adore, let every soul away. Almighty God of love, be welcomed in this place. We welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. Almighty God of love, we welcome in this place. To you our hearts are open. Nothing here is hidden. You are our one desire. You are Your fire fall down. I want to scream it out from every mountain top. Your goodness knows no bounds. Your goodness.
Thank you, band. Thank you, Vicky. Uh, do please take a seat. We are going to continue with a short quiz, which, like I said, you can join in with um, by... Uh, if, you've got a, if you've got a camera on your phone, you can point it at, sometimes at the screen. Sometimes that'll work, and it'll pick up the QR code. Or you can go to slido.com, and when it asks you for a number, you can give the number... 1054530. And um, then once you're there, once you're there, you should be able to then um, find a question that is being asked. What do you most like sharing? And I do apologize for the tininess of this writing. If you have a telescope you, with you, has anyone, anyone brought a telescope with them today? No? Um, you might be able to see these, these answers to this question. What do you most like sharing? So far, we have some answers, which I'm going to read out, which are fun stories, jokes, wine. I, uh, <laughs> I was about to say I know who wrote that, but I don't, actually. That's, that's what, in fact, more than one person has now written wine and food. Encouragement, beautiful walks, fun stories, funny clips, chocolate. Chocolate's making a late break for it there. Good news, happiness, love and friendship, silly stories, love. Oh, there's loads of new ones here. They're all coming in. It always changes shape. Photos, sharing photos. My brother once came home from a trip around Japan and he had 540 photos. And this was in the days of slideshows and he had slides. He gave us a 540 slideshow. He shared that joy with us. Most of them were pictures of trees from trains. Lots of trees in Japan. 
hugs, happiness, jokes. Uh, which ones haven't I said yet? Walks, pictures of cute guineas. Do you know, um, how important is sharing? How important is sharing? I've got the feeling that you could keep on writing stuff on here, actually. Moments. What, um, do you know, I, there's a, those, are, those as, they're, as they're kind of forming there, they're like a, it's like a tree growing, covered in, covered in and fruit and goodness. I think those are things we like sharing with friends. Is there anything else we like, you know, we, maybe it's not the stuff we like sharing, but stuff that we just, we just know that we want to share with people and we, we, um, presence, a smile, sharing a smile with people. Are you still writing stuff? Or do you reckon we've, we've reached the end on that one? There might be somebody writing a really long one there, waiting for it to appear. Happiness. Well, that's, that's really lovely. What we're going to do is we're going to move on from that. We might come back, we might come back to that a little bit later. Um, but we're going to move on to a quiz. Uh, can we move on to the quiz? If, um, Emily, if you, if you open the other Slido window, you should be able to control it from there. Okay, so I think this should be the same quiz. This should be the same uh, link. So if you'd like to just type in, oh yeah, you're, you're already on this. Those who are... Those who are on Slido can write in the names. If you don't have a phone or device that you can access this with, you can join in this quiz just by simply being here. All these names popping up. These, these are the names of the people around you in this room. I feel like making people slightly wave their hands with the names. Right. Now, is everybody who'd like to be joined up for the quiz, joined up for the quiz? If, you, if you're not, okay, good. I think we're going to move on to the first question. We're going to move on to the first question, which, were, which is, where was the world's largest sharing pizza made? Tilly has just joined in. Um, where was the world's largest sharing pizza made? So, a big, big pizza. Where was it made? Los Angeles, America, Manchester, UK, or Milan, Italy? Los Angeles, America, Manchester, UK, or Milan, Italy? That little dog's got a slice of it. Well, it's the home of pizza. You might be right, Stephen. Okay, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, next question. Next question. Oh, no, so you've got the answers first. We've got 69% have said Los Angeles, America, 15% Manchester, UK, and 15% Milan, Italy. What is the answer? It was Los Angeles, America. It filled up an entire convention center. And, and they cut it up into pieces, and they took it out into, people, into the people who lived in the local community. Um, it, was, it was over 1,000 people it fed. Now, next question. Next question. When Jesus fed the 5,000, he fed 5,000 people, and actually they, in, the, in the Bible it just says 5,000 men, because they weren't very good at counting women and children. 
So it was probably like, it was probably like 10,000 plus. When Jesus fed the 5,000, what did he share with the people? A chicken takeaway, five loaves of bread and two fish, or the world's largest pizza? Does it say chicken? <laughs> okay, five, four, three, two, one. Answer, please. Okay, well, interestingly, all of you opted for five loaves of bread and two fish. So either you have heard that story before, or you're very good at guessing. And it was the correct answer. Well done. Right, the next question. What is the next question? In the film The Lion King, what did Simba share with Timon and Pumbaa? His toys, his clothes, or his food? What did Simba share with Timon and Pumbaa? His toys, his clothes, or his food? What have we got? You're going to say food. Right, let's see what the answer is. Oh, again, 100% have gone for food, and you are correct. The correct answer is that Simba the lion shared his food with Timon and Pumbaa. Interestingly, random fact, I think Pumbaa's a meerkat, but meerkats are famous for sharing their food. So actually, that might have been a very culturally appropriate thing for a, a lion to do for a meerkat. Right, next question. What is the next question? What did the good Samaritan in the story told by Jesus of the Good Samaritan, share with the injured man. His clothes, his glasses, and his motorcycle. His time, his donkey, and his money. Or his house, his Lego, and his book collection. What did the Good Samaritan share with the injured man? His clothes, his glasses, and his motorcycle. His time, his donkey, and his money. His house, his Lego, and his book collection. Which of those three, should we have a countdown from 10? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, oh no, that's 3, 2, 30, 1. Okay, oh, everyone's gone for his time, his donkey, and his money. Yeah, in the story of the Good Samaritan, the, this, 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 traveling man, this Samaritan, he finds an injured man by the side of the road in a dangerous place. He shares his time with him, puts him on his donkey, he tends his wounds, and he takes him to a place of safety and pays for his recovery. He shares his time, his donkey, and his money. Next question. Well done for getting it right. What is the most shared video on YouTube? Baby Shark, do do be do do, Gangnam Style, or the wheels on the bus go round and round. Which is the most shared video on YouTube? Five, four, three. Two, one, zero. What is the answer, please? Okay, some have gone for Baby Shark, some have gone for Gangnam Style, some have gone for the wheels on the bus. The correct answer is Baby Shark. It's been, it's been shared, and it's now been watched, it's now been watched 15 billion times which apparently is a lot of times. So that's been watched twice for every person on the planet. Gangnam Style was once the most shared video, but Baby Shark has roared past it. So we can share things. We can share things like food. We can share things like 
um, our time. We can share things like videos. We can share good news. We can share parties. Can we put back up the, just the, the, um, the slide which had the uh, answers that we gave for the question, what do we most like sharing? So, like I said, you may not be able to see it, see it very well from the back, but you might be able to see it on your phone. Beautiful walks, experiences, chocolate, fun stories, love, jokes, music, memes. Uh, who put memes? Who put memes? <laughs> Janice, that's brilliant. So for those of you who don't know, a meme is basically just an interesting idea that is really catchy and it's often a picture and it's just a way of um, sharing something funny. Smile, photos, wine, presents, walks, friendship, funny clips, good news, silly stories, experiences, love and friendship, food, moments, love and clothes, encouragement, happiness, and cute guinea pig pictures. And there's even more arriving as we speak. There's something about, there's something about like something we enjoy ourselves. That's great. But something we can share with somebody else so they enjoy it too, that is even better. Oh, don't add new things because I want to read what the new things are. I can't tell where the new ones have arrived because it keeps on moving around. Oh, anyway. Mummy. Oh, no, that is really lovely actually because those closest relationships we have with the people who we love most, actually sharing with them is... Oh, just wonderful. Shall we, shall we continue with another song? I think we've got Hallelujah Feeling. Because um, actually this next song, it's one we did at Lighthouse this summer, the, the outreach event for the local kids of the community. Um, this song, it really touches something in me about, about actually sharing in the joy of, that Jesus brings. And, well, if you don't know it, it's quite easy to learn. Um, let's sing and praise God. Let's let's stand as we're able. Some days I climb the mountains, some days I touch the clouds, some days my best friend has been the cold hard ground. There's mercy new each morning.
Thank you, band, and thank you, Vicky. We're going to, um, would like to take a seat again? The band are going to take a seat too. I'm going to read a short passage from the Bible. And I'm just going to give a little bit of context for this. Because this, um, this is a short passage of the Bible. This is from a, a letter that was written to one of the very early churches. And I don't, I don't know how much you know about the Bible. Um, here is a big old version of the Bible, a paper one. Um, in, the, in the New Testament, the bit towards the end, you've got what's known as the Gospels, which are the accounts of the life of Jesus. And then there's a series of letters written to the early churches by, by key people. And one of these letters is the letter written to the Corinthian church, the church in Corinth. Emily, if you'd like to pop the first verse of that up on the screen. Now this, would this letter would have been probably written just before the Gospels themselves were written. And in Paul's letter, as he writes to the church, he wants to explain to them about the things that Jesus taught his followers to do. And one of the things that Jesus taught his followers to do was share communion. And so he explains one part of the communion service like this. He said, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And this was, this was the special act of remembrance that Jesus taught his followers just on the night before he was arrested, on the, on the night he was arrested, just before he was arrested, Jesus taught them this. Jesus knew what was about to happen. He knew that his body was going to be broken. He knew that wasn't the end. And he taught his followers this way of sharing. Now, sharing, we've thought about some things we can share. We've thought about things we can share, haven't we? And some of those things that we, we said, do you know, one of the things that people left off that list. And I'm like, I guess, I guess in a way you, you did actually include it. But actually ourselves. Sometimes we share ourselves. Jesus was sent by God to share himself. He was sent by God to share himself. Can you tell me, and we won't have a little slido up on the screen for now. We'll just have people calling out. Can you tell me any other things that Jesus was sent to share? You might need to think for a moment. The good news. So, yes, and that, you know, that was put down on the, on the thing earlier on. Sharing the good news. Jesus was sent to share the good news. Any other things that Jesus was sent to share? Healing. That voice just came out of, like, oh, was it Anna, was it you at the back? Yeah. Jesus was sent to share healing, yeah. And I'll come back to healing. Anything else Jesus was sent to share? Love and forgiveness. Oh, yeah, yeah. Forgiveness. Power. Himself. Jesus was sent to share himself, share forgiveness, love, power, healing, the good news. Trust, yeah, trust. Truth, yep. Kingdom the kingdom of God. Oh, this is great. I feel like I feel like you could all be doing a sermon up here instead of me. Actually, anything else? Do you know the, what? Sometimes when sometimes when we when we're asked questions like this, we, we think of one or two little things, and then we just and then later on we'll be like I'll, I'll be walking home. It's like oh yeah. Also, it's not supposed to be an exhaustive list. But wrapped up in all of those different things, the things that Jesus shared. And actually, Jesus 
was sent by God, but his followers didn't necessarily realize immediately that he was sent by God. But as they heard, I think the first thing was the good news. They heard the good news preached. And so Jesus shared a message. He was sent to share a message. And the message caught their ears. They started to hear it. And it wasn't a totally new message. It was a message that was there in the words of the Old Testament. But Jesus wove them together. And the message sounded fresh and new to their ears. The message of hope. The message of joy. And so Jesus shared this message and they they started to realize that Jesus wasn't ordinary. It wasn't, this, wasn't just, this wasn't just any old person. But then Jesus, like you said, Anna, Jesus didn't just share, the, didn't just share words and ideas. He, he shared the life of God by touching people and healing them. So people, people who were crippled, people who were blind, people who were deaf, people whose bodies felt broken, Jesus touched them and gave them new life. And the people who were there watching realized that Jesus was certainly nobody ordinary. And actually, like Jeff said, Jesus didn't just come to share good good words and didn't just come to share life, but he brought forgiveness, something that only God could do. He declared to to a paralyzed man, he said, I I forgive you. Sorry, he doesn't say that. He said, your sins are forgiven. He said, your sins are forgiven. He declares forgiveness. So I don't know if you've ever felt like, I don't know if you've ever felt like all of your, like all of the things you've done wrong are weighing down on you. All of the things that you've done that have hurt other people, they weigh you down. Well, Jesus comes and he takes that burden away. But, but also, we can in life, we can feel like things that other people have done wrong, they can be a burden on us too. And sometimes we think of sin and we think about guilt and we think about the things that we've done wrong. But, but sin is a great big jumbled snare that traps us. And it's not just the things we've done wrong, but it's the things that other people have done wrong and they've just crum- crumbled up on top of us. Crum- well, I don't even know what word I'm trying to say there. But when Jesus says your sins are forgiven, it's the things that you've done. And it's also the weight of what other people have done to you. Jesus can take that off you and take it away from you. And only God can do that. And so the followers of Jesus, the people who who watched him, they realized that Jesus wasn't just somebody saying nice things, wasn't just somebody doing nice things. And Jesus started to say things like, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. As the Father is in me, so am I in you. Jesus made it clear to the people who followed him, that this wasn't just any old man. This was the Son of God. And so Jesus shared God himself. Jesus shared the life of God, the love of God. That that trust that he extended to his followers, he extends to us. He trusts us to live and follow him. And so as Jesus was sent to share with us, we receive, and that's what happens here. In this little story, this this, this is the kind of the pinnacle of the sharing that happened in Jesus' life. On the night before he died, he shared this bread and this wine. And we have here, we have bread and wine here. As Jesus taught his church to do, as Paul encouraged the church to do, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he shared it with his followers. And he said, Do this in remembrance of me. Because Jesus shared all of those things, but he shared of himself. And his life that he shares with us, he gives to us. 
It's a free gift. There's no cost to this that hasn't been paid by Jesus. His life given for us and shared with us so that it may live in us, so that he may live in us. And our our theme for this autumn is sent by God. And as I've been talking about Jesus being sent by God, you may be kind of focusing on that idea of sent by God, thinking about Jesus. But this wonderful story is that it doesn't just end there. Jesus calls us himself to go and do the same things that he did, to share the good news, to share healing, to share hope, to share forgiveness. How much does this world need to know the true meaning of forgiveness? Healing from the sins that we've done and the sins that have been done to us, made clean and new. How much does this world need that? Have you seen any news this week? Jesus has sent us to share a message a message of peace and love, a message of power, a message of joy, a message of new life. And for us, that new life starts with Jesus as his life is broken and given to us and shared with us so that we can go and share with the world. Jesus was sent to share and he sends us to share. So we're going to share communion now. It, the bread and the wine is, is, a, is a reminder that we have to take inside of us that love of Jesus so that it's not just something we leave on a shelf or put in a trophy cabinet or put in our wallet and never take out again. But actually the life of Jesus needs to come within us and live within us and grow within us. So we're going to say the communion prayer together, which is going to appear up on the screen. And then we'll share bread and wine. Just as Paul encouraged the followers of Jesus to do in the very earliest days of the church, just as Jesus did with his disciples. And just in case you didn't know, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love, you made us for yourself. And when we turned away, you didn't reject us, but you came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children. And welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life. That we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross. And made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it. And gave it to them saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord with your whole church throughout the world and throughout time, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. 
We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite the band to come up and receive communion. And then they're going to lead us. Yes, you can, Annette. Oh, Lord. 
Above every other sound, I can hear the angel choir singing peace on earth from heaven above. Reminding us tonight, there's a higher song to see, and proclaiming that the Savior has come. shadow of the night in that past of angel light when the tidings of great comfort and joy now we raise our voices high join the sound of heaven's choir singing peace on earth and praises to God glory Glory, hallelujah, sing the praises of our God. Let all let the people sing a song, let the heavens sing along, let the hallelujah. Let all of the people sing a song, let the saints just sing along, come, come on, hallelujah, hallelujah. praises of our God. Do you know, um, there's something else we share as well, is fellowship. Just take a seat a moment again. It may feel like you're jumping up and down the whole time, but 
I just noticed something, which is just a, a little bit lovely. Um, we, we, have a, we have a Zoom function, so people can join in with our service by Zoom. And um, I, I, in, a, in a church, we don't always get to know every single person who's around, but um, I just noticed that Mike Ziv and I, who was a member of the church here for a while, and who's moved to Leeds, I think it's Leeds, Mike, um, he's on Zoom at the moment. So I'm just going to share a wave of welcome um, and just a blessing to you. Uh, whether it's Leeds or Sheffield, I cannot remember, um, but bless you. And um, you may want to share the, the, the church Zoom link with people, actually. There are people, there are people who are stuck at home. There are people who, who you might know who might need to um, be able to join in with the church service somehow. Um, do please share our, our Zoom link. And thinking about sharing... Just there, there may be a challenge that I might like to lay on your hearts for this week. What is God calling you to share this week and this month and this season? We're made in the image of God and Jesus was sent to share and so are we. And you think of that list of, of great things that we really love sharing. Uh, can, tech team, can we bring it back up again on the screen? Um, Maybe, just, just think, I'm just going to read through this list. I'm going to read through this list because it is so tiny that you can't see it. Which of these is God calling you to share with somebody this week? Cute guinea pig picture as well. I think we all, we're all called to share that one, aren't we? Chocolate. Who's God calling you to give a bar of chocolate to? Fun stories. Jokes. Who is God inviting you to give a hug to this week? Although do always check for permission first before hugs. Don't just do random strangers or people who don't like being touched. Love, beautiful walks, memes, jokes, music, a smile, wine, photos, presents, family, sad stories. Oh, do you know, that really touches me. Somebody's written sad stories on there because actually we're not just called to share in the good times. Actually, we're called to share in the times when it's harder. And, oh gosh, that's, that was really, really hit me, that has. Presents, walks, family, funny clips, good news, silly stories, Mars bars. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not making everybody own up to everything, but who wrote Mars bars? <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Mummy, love and friendship, food. Food. Maybe there's somebody who God's inviting you to share a meal with. Um, or, or maybe there's somebody who's stuck at home because they've got a broken leg or they're pregnant or who knows what it is. But actually you could take them some food. Maybe that's the thing to do. Moments, friendship, encouragement. Who is God calling you to encourage? Experiences, happiness, love and clothes. I'm curious about the love and clothes one because that's a very specific combination, love and clothes. Um, I love it. Oh, and I've got a message on, the, on, the, on, on Zoom from Mike, who's watching in. Correct, Chris, I'm in Cheshire, and I'm now a qualified accountant. <laughs> oh, thanks to the reference I gave him. <laughs> <laughs> I will come one day to say thank you. Oh, bless you, Mike. Um, oh, bless you. Praise God. Praise God. Um, we're going we're gonna, to... Um, we're going to practice something now, which we're going to do again at the end of the service. Just a little short prayer. And it's not going to come up on the screen. So this is one that I'd, I'd like us just to kind of like learn for a moment. This is part of a prayer that we say most weeks at our nine o'clock service. It's this. Send us out in the power of your spirit. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory to live and work to your praise and glory. Send us out in the power of your spirit. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Oh, you did the second line without prompting. That was very good. Should we try it all? Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Shall we stand and sing together one last song of praise? Thank you. Yeah.
the thrill my soul to see King Jesus, your grace has no horizon line. Your grace has no horizon line. I'll go anywhere, anywhere at all, as long as I'm with you. I'll go anywhere, anywhere, you call me to, as long as I'm with you. As long as I'm Take me out beyond the waves, Lord Jesus. You are the captain of my soul. There is no map for where your wild heart takes us. We're running into the unknown. We're running into the Last, um, one last little notice to share today. Uh, Ruth has asked me to remind, remind people. <laughs> uh, Ruth has asked me to remind people that there is a healing prayer course taking place in October. If you want to know more about that um, or you need a reminder about it, come and talk to me or Ruth when she's around next week. So, can you remember the prayer that we practiced a few moments ago? Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So may you go with the blessing of God that Jesus came and shared with us, that you've received, and that you will share with others. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and with those you love this day and until Jesus comes again. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. But before you go and do all that, stay and have a cup of tea and coffee first. Bless you. Good, Annette. Bye-bye, Zoomers. We'll see you soon, Mike. Thank you, band. That was fantastic. Thank you, tech team. Thank you, welcome team.